Ralph Malouf, you're an aeronautical engineer and an inventor, and we want to talk about some of the things that you've been doing with some engines that are here at Oshkosh. This engine that we're looking at right now is a modified Volkswagen engine. What is it that you've done to make this engine special? Okay, um, first of all, I joined uh, another terrific inventor by the name of Joe Horvath, Joseph Horvath. A lot of people know him. Mm -hmm. He he is the father of the Volkswagen-based aircraft engine, mm -hmm. and we have been associates and friends for about 50 years. I'm an engine designer and a propulsion engineer, and the two of us work together to bring real aviation quality to an otherwise automotive piece of work, and we've figured out ways to get more and more power out of it over the years without compromising its reliability and strength. So what are some of those modifications that you've done? Well, they always start out with more displacement, bigger pistons, longer stroke, freer breathing cylinder heads, better carburation, better ignition, and all of these things came together gradually over a period of about three years, and people liked it and started flying it. What is it about putting a Volkswagen engine in an airplane that is appealing to the, the sport pilot or the, uh, the aviation builder? The weight and the cost. Both are lower. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what does this engine weigh then? Um, this engine, which is uh, conservatively uh, rated at 85 horsepower, weighs 170 pounds. Things like exhaust piping and engine mount run that up to around 180 pounds. This model, which is the latest one, 2.33 liter piston displacement, is among about almost 4,000 engines that Revmaster has made for airplanes. Now here at Oshkosh, we do have one of your inventions, and it's something that you hope will help kit builders get a lot more efficiency out of their airplanes. So tell us what we're looking at here. Okay, um, this is a I call it a rubber engine, and uh, the purpose of this in rubber engine is to encourage kit builders and designers to try to get larger propellers on their airplanes. And the purpose for doing that is to get more out of the gasoline they burn. Mm -hmm. So what discourages uh, most builders is that, is that the technology is not readily available to them mm -hmm. and help is even less available and we're trying to um, substitute that vacancy by providing the things that they need to, to make the development but uh, in a way that they don't have to purchase a lot of things mm -hmm. because we furnish that when we get to the right place the rubber engine becomes a real engine and all they have to do is build a real engine. So how does it work? Um, the concept is to make everything adjustable. Uh -huh. In this case, we're using very high performance belts to reduce the propeller speed while not having to reduce the engine speed. Okay. And uh, the purpose of that, of course, is to get more horsepower out of the engine by allowing it to turn faster. So we have uh, this system, a combination of pulleys or shivs as they call them, combination of different belts and a combination of different propellers. And the builder gets us started by telling us what his objective is. Then we do the math, we come to the builder or the experimenter with the combination that we think might get, get him close to his objective. And then variations can take place and up to this point, the builder has only bought an engine. And all of these other things we furnish, uh, we make the adjustments or help the builder make the adjustments, different propellers, different belts, different pulley ratios, and they fly off uh, whatever they need to until they're satisfied that they have the right combination. At that point, we freeze the center distance between shafts the belt ratio, the propeller size, and we substitute all of this stuff with a permanent structure that does the same thing as the final adjustment. Now the builder has not spent thousands of dollars doing all of this experimenting, and we have found a way to do most of it on the ground. 
so that before that first flight, it's pretty close. Let's talk a little bit about you personally because you have a long history in this business. Was your initial introduction to aviation in the Army Air Corps, did you get interested in flying before that? Oh, I, I was uh, flying before that, but as a teenager. What were you flying back in the day? Uh, well, I learned how to fly in uh, something called a Curtis Challenger biplane. Mm -hmm. It was about pretty close to 200 horsepower, a lot of power for those days. Mm -hmm. And it had a Hamilton standard steel propeller mm -hmm. <laughs> and a radial engine by Wright. Yeah. As someone who has seen a lot of innovation and development over the history of aviation, what in your mind is something that has really stood out as being a, a huge advance in the world of sport aviation that where you live? Um, I would think that we would would give credit to an organization like EAA because mm -hmm. without EAA we couldn't have achieved the uh, invitation to all of those people who didn't actually believe that they could mm -hmm. but then they found out that they could and that was uh, uh, the big push that caused sport aviation to grow and including home building of airplanes. Mr. Miller, thank you so much for taking some time to talk with us today. We really appreciate it. It's a fascinating story. Good luck with your engine, and we hope to see you here for many more years. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Aero TV is brought to you by... Since 2001, MGL Avionics has produced avionics for experimental and light sport aircraft. The flagship product is the IEFIS, a comprehensive next-generation flight, engine, and navigation instrument designed to meet the demands of the modern pilot. See more at www.mglavionics.com. Triggs TT31 Mode S Transponder is the class-leading retrofit to the KT-76A or KT-78A. Easier and faster to install, you can now integrate with GNS or GTN WAS navigators and use our free ADSB STC list covering 650 aircraft types. ADSB just got easy.